As Kevin said, uh, as Chandran said, we are really, really happy to be here to celebrate. Really, all of us are celebrating together. But many of us have been working in this area for a long time, and it's a joy uh, that we have reached here. It's time for us to pause and really celebrate what we have achieved so far and look forward to what we can achieve in the future. So um, we're not going to, we have time is short because we have many people to, to felicitate and to cheer. Um, so I'd like to invite Adeline Fu, who's been, who's a mother of three and who has published 18 children, children's books. Adeline is one of the most popular, most successful children of children's authors today. And I'd like to mention also that uh, Erlai Kwan is a librarian, a senior librarian with 15 years of experience. And she, as she says, she's a, a backroom girl, she says. Uh, invaluable support that she provides for uh, people working in this field. Uh, to keep things short, uh, Adeline has got uh, a set of slides and I will take no more time. I'll leave it to Adeline. If you have any questions, perhaps we have a few minutes for questions at the end. Okay, hi everyone, good evening, thank you for making time here. Um, first, we have a disclaimer, okay, when Mr. Mama first invited us to this overview, I didn't say yes immediately because it's a lot of work because it says overview of children's scene, right? So we have a qualifier. Um, many books, time books are not included because there's no time and um, I apologize for that. That, that. that does not mean that it is excluded, okay? So perhaps next year we will add more to the slides, huh? Okay, a very quick um, introduction. So what we have actually pulled out are books that have Singapore as a theme or Asia, the larger Asia. And if we focus on these themes, then our qualifier is that the author is Singaporean or at least someone living in Singapore. Okay. So the very early books that we could find in the 70s belong to the series of books that were adapted from Chinese stories. And um, actually, if you go further back, they were first published as English printed. You might be the youngest grandmother, but I'm also one of the youngest mothers in law, but I'm in my 40s, so I <laughs> need my glasses. Okay, so you could see they were first published by Oxford University Press in 71, and Shinhi, Shinhi books, if you were old enough, you would remember them. They actually adapted them and published in Chinese, and again, in 75 and 81. I'll just run through them quickly because uh, these slides, I would make them available if you want, perhaps with the AFCC, so we, we could just keep this around them. And I think in our research, we find that certain names keep cropping up. And it's because they are either perfect authors or they are just brilliant artists. Chiang Ming Chai is one of them. And I keep seeing his name. 74, 75, he started with, uh, writing folk tales as well as uh, a lot of uh, Malay stories. Huh? But of course, they are written in English. And this name, Quan Shan Mei. All right? I'm not even sure if she's alive because I think she's passed on. Am I right? Okay, but yeah, she's that old, I think. And um, surprise, Katrin Lin. Singapore's monsters will know that name very well. She has written children's books as well. And these are just the few that we have managed to pull out. And you can tell from the titles as well as the pictures that they were written for early readers. Not picture books, I think. Um, not the preschool audience, but the 6, 7, kingdom age group. So, just, just to recap, there was no clear Singaporean identity and I think a lot of the stories that we have seen are largely Chinese and they have strong moral values. So, what about books in the 80s? What seems apparent was the emergence of a local Singaporean theme, right? And over in the adult fiction genre, books with a strong Singaporean identity have emerged. And I put this out because we cannot discount um, the influence of these books. Alright, I've got 3, 82, 84, 86, Catherine Lynn, Suji Christine and Robert Yeo. Alright, pioneers of literary Singapore. And because of this, it just means that children's book publishers are emboldened them and they dare to publish more books on children's uh, about life in Singapore. And this is something that I can pull out and I kind of guess that they are created in the series and it's a collection of short stories, I think. Alright, for primary school kids. And this name again, Pat Patricia Maria Tan. She has a lot more books, but we just reach your mind. Huh? Singapore News and Publications, I don't think it's around anymore. But the Nanyang Sing Chung Chung series, and you can tell from the title, Kui Min Visits the Zoo, it's something very localized. Huh? More Malay tales, something that fascinated us. Of course, um, even today, we have a lot of expatriates 
a lot of expatriates living amongst us, and um, a lot of the stories that they tell are the stories that they have collected by speaking to the natives. So, like for example, with this guy Clifford Criswell, a governor of Great Southern Lakes, he he used to collect these stories, and finally, someone in 1985, Longman actually collected them and abridged, did them abridged adaptation of it. Now, yeah? right, this one fascinated me. Street of the Small Night Market, obviously a local market, Silver Sherry, probably Eurasia. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Times, huh? Jesse Lee, another name that cropped up. All right, the whole idea for this night was actually meant to be a tribute to Jesse, but she's not here, right? So maybe next year we'll, we'll consider that. But anyway, she has this whole series of books. Um, the most famous ones are the Muti series. Okay, let's see. So these are the old ones. Right now, Marshall Cambridge has actually reprinted these books and they, they go by a different um, cover and all that but I think they have reproduced using the same illustrations but these were the original stories that were published in the 80s and we just wanted to show them now it's cute because she used to write the stories for her kids all right? and a lot of the teenagers that I've met the oldest one is a 27 year old young man CEO of the company and he tells me that he remembered reading these books and the youngest one was like um, a teenager in college so it, the impact of these books are stories with values which young readers can identify with, but I think more importantly, they grow up with Muti because if you just go back, he goes to school, he plays hide and seek, he falls in love, and he has a son, right? So that's wonderful. Um, so, books from the 1990s, I would say because the film industry was uh, coming of age, four films that I pulled out William Ware, Me Pop, Man, Army Days, and Shaw Stories. You know these, right? Eric Koo, as well as. Um, on King Sand. Yep. Alright? And uh, because of that, I think books also gave a uh, local identity. And Bessie Chua was another name that we kept, we kept saying. Jesse B. Bessie Chua. And this, these are the spider series that I found. Wonderful. And Su Chen Christine Lin. Su Chen Christine Lin. She wrote children's books as well. Huh? Look at that. Granny, Grandpa the Collector. And at one glance, you could tell. Right? That's actually Gamma Lin and Grandpa the Collector and and this one, I just put it out because the title is really cute. A Singapore tale, and you can tell it's very local. Huh? Jessie Lee. Okay, this is the first of her illustrators that I would like to highlight because she's very actively illustrating now, Colleen. Uh, she's got like one of her new books. Huh? I, I, I love this book very much because it captured a certain part of her life when they had to move out of Kampong to move into the HDB flat. So it's books like that that resonate with the local audience. Eh? And a sequel to that is about a friend in need. And look at that, something about public shit, eh? something that we recognize as well. Produced, published by Landmark Books in 92. The Book World Book Club, do you want to talk a bit about this? Three books won awards. Alright, so this 
one was something that um, was very cool. Out. It, it started in 1999 where Marshall Cavendish came out with this idea for the Buddy Writers Project. And the whole intention is to get kids introduced right, to the publishing process. So they submit their stories to the schools, um, the publisher will pick them, and they will guide the children through writing, illustrating, editing, and publishing the book. And I think most lately, most, most recently, it has gone into an ebook. So wonderful. My daughter was one of the inspiring ones, but she didn't read anything. <laughs> I told her to keep trying. Okay, so from 2000 onwards, Stories Focus were largely on Asia. And, um, well, I, I see a pattern that the artists are actually not living in Singapore. And of course, the emergence of the horror ghost genre and the illustrated novel, which my books belong to, and then this resurgence in writing heritage. Um, well, do you, do you want to talk about this? Okay. Everyone knows about Singapore stories. <laughs> <laughs> it even had TV series, I didn't know that. Okay, uh, play one of ours, but look at this. The, the, the line that I had to bold was, it out so Harry Potter and Singapore and Malaysia. So there you go, we do have Asian stories that have made it, alright? Number one, children's book author, alright. Okay. David Xiao, yes, your books as well. Well, in 2004, David Xiao's books were published by uh, Tato Publishing, it's just sitting there, right? And uh, they have been so worldwide, and it's something that he doesn't talk about. But the few of us know it. So, should I say this? Some authors like to brag about going on to Singapore, but actually he has done it, okay? It's just that he doesn't talk about it, so he's just a very humble person. But there you go. I, I know how you feel about the books, but they are wonderful, okay, David? All right, Shaman is she here? Shaman is Also in 2004, she started a series of uh, Sasha books, and I, I love those because my, in 2004, my kids were about, my, my first kid was four, and I just bought these books because he started going to the zoo, to the Sentosa and all that, and I love these books because he would read them and he would recognize these places that were talked about, and they are illustrated by Alpana, who is living here as well. Felix, is Felix here? Felix Chong? Alright, the young adult genre. The call for the crying house and the woman in the last carriage. Now, Felix was a poet and a novelist and a teacher. Alright? And it's amazing that he's written this, but I know he was influenced by his son. His son Ryan was about 13 when he wrote these books, and he paid his son money to read the text to see if it gels with a teenager. So there you go. <laughs> Sounds like the, alright, the year 2006 was the year that the National Book Development Council together with the MDA started the scheme called the First Time Writers and Illustrators Publishing Initiative. And I think the first batch had nine books. Some Sweet Girl was one of them. And um, I think this was the one that started the trend of writing heritage. The first book was about some sweet women who lived in the past and they were women who provided labor with construction sites helping to build many of our buildings. So she wrote this book, right? And that started. And 2007 the year was when Sean Dismal decided to do a personal story Right, about her, her background of her mother being adopted, right? Ah, that's right, okay. So this book was also picked, and I think it's used in Ministry of Education as a recommended text for classroom yeah, teaching. And this one, I think um, you put it out, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, and Tan, Papa, I think it's unpublished, but it looks great. It's definitely a local story, right? Alright, this one mine. Like I said, right, I can't claim to be the first. Um, Stephanie Ho, Holy Ling, Sam Sui Girl, she wrote the first series about heritage and I caught on on the idea and I wrote on my Puranatan heritage, which is my parents, my father's heritage and these are just a series of books and I worked with Lee Kaoling, whom I know has been illustrating for a long time, okay? 2008, 2009, the Book Council handed the administration of the First Time Writers Scheme to Street Times Press, am I right? And there were like Two, two years of books, and these three were over two years, I think. And they started this game, the Children's Book Award by Hagrid Anwar Children's Book Award last year. And one of the books won $10,000. Okay? And of course, I would not discount this. Pitch Person is an animation house, it's uh, local in the sense that it's uh, family members. Uh, Lo local or married to local women, okay, and um, they had a successful series of uh, animated programs and they actually converted their IP from cartoon to print and they did a series of Chinese readers 
bilingual readers, which worked very well, and they even adapted it for iPhone apps.